Today's video is sponsored by Sling TV. Sling lets you save money and still watch all the content you love. If you've thought of cutting the cord, Sling offers the best value in the market when it comes to getting what you paid for. And we thank Sling for sponsoring this video. I did a video a lot like this about a year ago where I asked whether cord cutting still saves money, right? But a lot has happened in the last 12 months or so. War, inflation, scandals, the Moon Knight series on Disney, whatever. It makes you wonder whether there's anything good in this world at all. And I'm here to tell you that for cord cutters at least, yeah, there is. I've crunched some numbers and for all of you cord cutters out there, it is looking good. The question we'll answer in this video after a lot of table setting is whether cord cutters are really saving money in their life after cable. What sort of budget can you have for streaming TV after you've cut the cord? And between Sling TV and Hulu Live and YouTube TV and Fubo and DirecTV Stream, do any of these actually fit the bill, so to speak? In other words, can any of them actually recreate the cable experience and save you money? Well, to find out, Let's dive in. Thanks for joining me today, everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video, if it's helpful to you. Okay, let's get into it. The question we want to answer is whether cord cutting can save you money if you're still getting the same channels that you did with cable. And we're going to break this down into a few questions, and we need to start with a baseline. So our first question is, what do cable and internet currently cost? Well, according to the most recent numbers, it's 114 bucks a month on average per household. Now, does that sound like a lot? It might, but it used to be worse, a lot worse. And obviously, I know there's a lot of variation in the numbers. Your numbers are probably gonna be different. We're talking about a national average here. Okay, so this is just a starting point. Our second question is, what does internet currently cost? We're gonna try to pull that out from that number and isolate what does just internet cost? The reason for that is if you're going to stream your TV, well, you're going to need to do that over the internet. So you need a good internet connection, uh, and then we can figure out how much you're able to spend on TV after that. But first, let me tell you a story about how good you have it right now. According to the most recent US Telecom broadband pricing report, yeah, that's a thing that exists, the average internet cost in 2022 was $45.49. That's for the average plan. We're not talking about the highest speeds out there. We're not talking about the lowest tier. That's your average plan in 2022, $45.49. But here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna be throwing a lot of numbers at you from here. And when I'm doing comparisons, I'm going to use $2015. And the reason for that is simple. If you're gonna compare one year to another, you have to take inflation into account. So when I'm doing these comparisons, I'm gonna switch into $2015, which is a pretty standard measurement right now. Okay, so if we do that, then in 2022, the average internet cost would be $36.33 versus 2021, when the average internet cost was $42.59. So that's a 15% decrease over the course of the last year or so. Not too bad. But if we zoom out, the numbers get even more stark. Again, $36.33 in 2022, but seven years earlier, in 2015, that number was $65.62. Holy smokes, that's a 45% decrease over seven years in how much we're paying on average for our internet access. But hang on a second, because that's just the cost. That doesn't tell us how good the product actually is, right? Well, if we look at the average internet speed that homes are getting in the US, in 2022, it's 98 megabits per second. In 2015, it was 43 megabits per second. And that's a 128% increase. That is huge. Now, if we put all those numbers together, we get a cost per megabit per second. In 2015, it cost $1.52 for each megabit per second in download speed that you're getting. In 2022, the latest numbers that we have, 37 cents per megabit per second. That's a 76% decrease over the last seven years. That's impressive. So with those numbers, somebody paying 45.97 for internet, this time that's switching back into today's dollars, okay? They should be getting about 99 megabits per second. Not bad. Now, just for the sake of ease and to account somewhat for tax and of course inflation, let's just round that number up to 50 bucks a month as what we should expect to pay for good internet. And yes, you may want more or less, that's fine. We're gonna play the averages game here. So if the price we're trying to beat by cutting the cord is 114 bucks a month and 50 of that is going to internet, that leaves us $64 to work with. 
And since we rounded up a bit on the internet number, let's go ahead and keep it simple and do the same with TV. That's $65, that's our budget for TV. Now that's a rough number, okay? Because cable bundles as they were, as they are, I suppose, aren't quite as simple as internet cost plus TV cost equals bundle cost. I know, but we're doing the best we can here for illustrative purposes. And let me anticipate another objection. Wait, Craig, you say, we want to save money, not just equal the cost from cable. And that's fair enough. But cord cutting isn't just about the pure dollar amount. There are other benefits to it as well that we can take into account. So if I'm paying 114 bucks a month to have a one or two year contract, that's not as good to me as paying 114 bucks a month and having the freedom to quit a service anytime I want. That freedom is worth something too. All right, now with that in mind, question number three is how much does streaming TV cost? Well, as nice as the price decrease in internet has been, Unfortunately, the same can't be said for streaming TV, and you know that. They've raised their prices across the board many times over the same period. So do the averages shake out? Do we break even at least? Well, let's take a look at the numbers. So for each streaming TV provider, I chose the lowest tier package, and I also didn't do any sign up bonuses. So no 20% off for your first three months, or here's this hamster, thanks for signing up. All right, so no promotions, just the base cost for the base package from each provider. And with that in mind, Sling came in as per usual as the cheapest of the major options. They're gonna be either 40 or 55 bucks a month. It's 40 bucks a month if you can get away with it, but most people are probably gonna end up using that 55 bucks a month uh, package on Sling, the orange plus blue. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. YouTube TV has held steady for a while at 65 bucks a month. Hulu Live comes in at 70 bucks a month. Fubo is now $75 a month, which matches DirecTV Stream, also $75 a month for the base package. So what were our benchmarks? Well, if we have our average internet bill at $50 a month and we're trying to stay under $114, call it $115, then we can't spend more than $65 a month on our TV service. So that pretty much leaves us with Sling and YouTube TV. Now, I recognize that there is more context to be had here, like I said earlier, but this isn't a full-blown review of each of these services. If you want that though, you can search for those on this channel. But without going into too much depth, I can recognize that Hulu Live, for instance, is pretty pricey in part because it's not just the live TV. It also includes Hulu and also Disney Plus and ESPN Plus these days. So it's not that bad, all things considered, if you like having all those things bundled together. And Sling does come in the cheapest, but like I said earlier, there's some more context we had there. For instance, I think it's fair to say that local channels aren't an emphasis on Sling. So if those are important to you and you wanna get Sling TV, you'll also need A, an antenna, and B, a prayer that that antenna will work. But hey, it does save on cost. Those local channels are actually really pricey for these providers to carry. And so that's why Sling comes in a little lower than the others that do put an emphasis on the local channels. Now, the good news is that with Sling, you could potentially drop down to that 40 bucks a month if you only need the channels on the orange or blue package. But let's be honest though, these packages are kind of designed to make you want both. So we should assume the $55 price tag on that one. All right, so there's a little bit of context. And yes, there is more to be said about, for instance, YouTube TV's DVR or Fubo's sports channels. But again, let's keep our focus on price. The question is, can you still, this year, save money by streaming the same channels you were getting on cable? Ah, uh, kind of. Sling will save you a bit. YouTube TV will at least keep you on par, and the rest of them will potentially cost a little extra. Like I said earlier in the video though, there is something to be said for having an easy escape hatch if you don't want or need a certain TV service anymore. In other words, not having a contract is worth something. There's even actually a monetary value attached to this idea. When the cord cutting revolution was beginning in earnest, I remember Xfinity, my TV provider at the time, offering a no contract option for $10 a month more than their normal plan. And they probably still do this. Honestly, I, I'm not sure, I haven't looked and I don't care, I'm not going back. <laughs> But if we factor that in, then once again, yes, the answer is yes. Cord cutting is in fact saving us all at least a little bit. 
Though if we're being honest, if we're talking about live TV services, those kind of cable imitators, it's not saving us a bunch. Okay, now it's your turn. Go hit the comments. I tried to anticipate a couple of objections, but hey, this is the YouTube comments section we're talking about here. I know you've got more. And besides, a lot of you are very smart about this stuff. So let me have it. Head down to the comments and on your way down there, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks everybody for watching. I will see you next time. This video is sponsored by Sling TV. Sling costs a lot less than cable, so you can save potentially hundreds every year if you switch today. And it's got everything you're used to from your old cable package. Cooking shows, home improvement shows, dramas, comedies, football games, 24-7 news coverage. Plus, there's no contract, so you can cancel any time. Save money, watch all the content you love, and escape the financial stress of contracts? Seems like a no-brainer to me. Go check out Sling TV today.